Problem number one for the uh, free response says, suppose that f is a one-to-one -one odd function such that the point negative one, negative one, two lies on its graph and that g of x is x, equal, x over 4x plus one. So it's got three parts, three parts. The first part says, find g to the negative one x. So you have to remember that this means that you want to find the inverse of g. Okay? And there's two ways of doing that. You could either, so for this part we're only looking at over here. This is going to be used later as in, in part b and, and c. So um, for uh, the two ways to find the inverse of g is to either solve for x and then uh, once you solve for x, switch the x and the g inverse, um, switch them around um, so that you have g inverse equals to whatever, or you could go ahead and switch them around first and then solve for it, the same thing. So I'm going to go and just uh, solve for x first, I'm going to do the first option. Um, and so I have g, I'll just write g by itself equals x over 4x plus 1. So the first thing to do is to get rid of the denominators. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4x plus 1 to cancel this out. And I have 4x plus 1 on this side. And so I'm going to factor this guy in and I'm going to get 4x g plus g equals 2x, okay? So you have to keep in mind which method you used. I started off with this, so I haven't switched the variables yet. So the method that I'm using is I'm trying to solve for x, that way I could switch the variables at the end. So again, remember, look at this and say, all right, I'm trying to solve for x. So to do that, I want to get all the x's over to one side. Uh, to group them together. So this has an x and this has an x. So let's go ahead and bring this guy over here. And so I'm going to subtract 4xg from both sides. And I'm going to get this term to cancel out over there. So I only have a g. And this side is going to have x minus 4x. So now what we're trying to do um, is to solve for x. So now that we've grouped the x together, um, I'm going to take out one of the x's here so that I get x times, so essentially I'm dividing each one of these by x. I take one out on the top and I leave one on the bottom um, inside to divide. So x divided by, by x is 1, 4xg divided by x, x is 4g. And that's going to equal to g. So I want this guy to be alone. And the last thing to do is, since there's no more x's inside of here, I can go ahead and divide 1 minus 4g over from both sides. And so that this uh, term cancels out and I get x equals g over 1 minus 4 and then lastly, I want to switch the variables then. So let me do it over this side. So now I'm just going to, instead of x, I'm going to write g negative 1 of x. And instead of g, I'm going to write x. Okay? So that is the final solution for part A. And I'm going to go ahead and write it uh, on the side, because we're going to need it later. So go ahead and start reading part B while I write this down. Um, g to the minus 1, x. Oh, sorry, I actually forgot to switch this to an x, so that's the answer. 
so this is problem one of the three response, part B. We've already gotten for part A the inverse of uh, G. Oh, and also G was given as Okay, so now we need to find uh, what the inverse of f at 2 is. And that's related to the point that they give us, negative 1, comma 2. They say f is a 1 to 1, an odd function, that has the point negative 1, comma 2. So let's just go ahead and write that in terms of f. So negative 1 is the x value. And 2 is our y value. So remember that uh, anything that's f of, g of, any type of function like that, that is the y value. So 2 is the y value, and the, this, this is the x value. So to find the, the inverse f for x equals negative 2, we need to look for the y for, for uh, the original function that has um, negative 2 as the y instead of the x. So remember that inverses, uh, the x of the inverse is the y of the original, the y of the inverse is the x of the original. So we have this point, but unfortunately this is a positive 2, whereas we're looking for a negative 2. So we need to go back to the question and see if we're missing something. So it says, f is a 1 to 1, an odd function that crosses the point negative 1 comma 2. So if it's a one-to-one -one function that's odd, uh, then we, we, we have the, um, from here, we can say that then that means that also f of positive one should be negative two. And that's how we get the second point. So um, now that we have this, we could say the x, negative 2 should be the y uh, of the original function. That means that the x of the original function is the y of the inverse function. So that uh, the inverse of f at negative 2 is positive 1. So let's write, uh, write that down on the side. So we can use that for part c. incorporate both part A and B together because what it says is find the G inverse of the F inverse of negative 2. So notice how we've already gotten this. So it's not too complicated but we have to use information that we've already found. Um, so remember how you could rewrite this as G inverse of f inverse of negative 2. So f inverse is the inner part of g inverse. It's the x value that we're going to plug in for g inverse. And let's go ahead and plug in for this because we already know it. Normally we would start from the inside out, so we would start from this uh, negative 2, plug it into f of uh, negative, of, or the inverse of f, but that's already given. So let's just go ahead and plug it in. This value is 1. So then that means that um, we have g inverse of just 1. And now from here, it's just a matter of plugging this x value into the g inverse that we've already found. So I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses every, everywhere I see an x. And now I'm going to plug in the 1. And now it's just algebra. I get negative 1 over 4 minus 1, which gives me negative 1 over 3. And that's my answer for part C.